Hello and welcome into another week of Catamount Football Weekly as we talk Western Carolina Catamount Football with head coach Mark Spear. I'm your host, Daniel Hooker. And coach, obviously a beautiful day up at Bristol Motor Speedway and but a tough loss for our Catamounts against a much improved ETSU squad. Well, no doubt it was a, a great event that Bristol Motor Speedway and uh, in conjunction with Food City put on. And, uh, you know, it was a great experience to, to be in that kind of venue and atmosphere, I think. It was kind of neat to watch our players walk in uh, and realize the magnitude of, of that event and that day. Uh, you know, so as far as that goes and the crowd and all, it was, it was, a, it was a great opportunity. It was great to be a part of, of that event. And uh, as I told our players, that'll be something, you know, even with the loss that they'll remember the rest of their lives playing at a place like that. So uh, obviously it was a, a great event. Um, and at the end of the day, when, when you kicked that ball off, though, it was just as I said, we, you know, you forgot you were in all that concrete and, and it got down to a ball game that, uh, you know, was, was a very disappointing loss uh, for our football team um, because we've had an opportunity there right before half to, uh, you know, kind of close out what we felt like put our foot on that on the gas so to speak being in a speedway and and, and trying to to break an opponent's will and um, we had some unfortunate events that happened at the end of the first half uh, that gave East Tennessee State some momentum with a you know a fumble there with about a minute 42 to go in the game and then East Tennessee drives down and uh, scores with about four seconds remaining on on the clock there right before halftime and that was an opportunity for us to probably put an opponent away and yet we let them back in the game and then we didn't respond uh, very well in the second half and uh, you know 100% as you go back and we try to self-evaluate ourselves as coaches every week but obviously with a loss and obviously with a tough loss um, you even self-evaluate yourself more and, um, you know, the, the glaring issue, which is 100% my fault as a head football coach, is the reason we got beat, and I said it after our press conference, and when you watch the film, um, it's very evident that East Tennessee was a much more disciplined football team than we were. Uh, we had drives, one drive that they have a 15, 16-yard uh, play that led to a score, 15, 16, you know, play series that led to one of their scores. Well, we had three critical penalties, and they were by upperclassmen, by seniors, that uh, that committed the critical penalties that any one of the three we don't commit, and we're probably off the field, and our offense is back on the field. Uh, their football team was on the field. Our offense played three quarters. They had the ball 38 minutes. We had it 22. Uh, and that was a direct result of undisciplined penalties that kept their offense on the field, kept our offense off the field. And we talk about going back to the Gardner-Webb game. We uh, had 12 penalties uh, that really hampered our production. Even though we won 44 to 14, our offense had a gazillion yards as Coach Glenn said, our offense didn't reach their capacity that day. We as a football team, and especially as a coaching staff, I think we looked at the outcome of the Gardner-Webb. We talked about the penalties. We talked about our discipline. We didn't correct them. And that's our job as coaches, and we didn't get that done. Yet we all looked at the outcome of the Garden of Web, talked about the penalties, and any time you have an event, you can respond to it one way or the other. We as a coaching staff did not respond to what happened to Garden of Web, and uh, you know, we didn't change the, the the negative discipline plays of the Garden of Web game, and as a result, uh, we looked at the outcome, and the only thing we can control is how we respond. We had penalties guarding the web. As a coaching staff and as players, we didn't respond to that. And uh, we got the outcome we deserved. And so what a valuable lesson. 
and uh, you know this is something we're going to talk about all week and hopefully these are the lessons that our players learn from in the game of football but uh, more importantly in the game of life. Coach, you talked about the offense only being on the field for about 22 minutes of that ball game, but when you were on the field, you were able to move the football, and what a day Detrez Newsom had. Four touchdowns for you, two rushing and two receiving. Pretty good day for Detrez Newsom. It was a, a good day, but at, at the end of the day, our offense did not reach our capacity, and we're not satisfied with just stats. We're satisfied as a coaching staff, and, and to get to the next level, um, you look at our offense, I think we're nationally in the top 15 in about every statistics, yet we sit here one and two. Until we're not worried about outcomes, we're worried about our response to why we lost, and, uh, and it all boils down to discipline. Our offense, after the Gardner Webb and East Carolina game, people have started stemming on us because we're a nonverbal offense meaning we come from the sideline with signals. So we are a nonverbal offense, and once our defense starts stemming on us, moving their front very fast, before the ball snapped, our players are jumping. We still had four false starts. Um, so we're, we're still limiting ourselves offensively. Still, you know, right after uh, – the last two ball games, right after the half, we go three and out. We're not responding coming out of the locker room. So we can talk about stats all day long, but until we talk about us being disciplined, doing what we're capable of doing, none of it matters. Coach, going into the bye week, obviously a lot of time coaches talk about bye weeks coming at good times for their football team. Do you feel this week a good week for the bye week to address some of the penalty issues and, and the health issues of this team? Well, I've, I've, I've always hated, by, they're necessary, I've always hated open dates because you get out of rhythm. Um, even before this loss, I was looking, for the first time I can ever remember, I was looking forward to an open date because we, we are a uh, beat up, we were a, going into this football game a very beat up football team. Um, but so is everybody else. That's, that's no excuse to that. Uh, uh, us being an injured and beat up football team had no direct result of why we lost this game. But this is a game, a week that we have to get back um, and get our football team healthy. We weren't win or lose going to go out this week and, and start just banging each other. You know, the physical part of us is not our problem. And so we don't need to go respond negatively as a coaching staff and go back and just get on Oklahoma drills and, 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 and beat, beat each other up. Uh, physicality and even playing hard is not our problem. Our problem as a coaching staff and our problem as a football team is, is the discipline issues. And, and that's what we will address, number one. Our number one priority of this week is to uh, become a healthy football team by next uh, by, by game week and then number two is to uh, get back to 100% holding ourselves accountable you know I told our coaches in a very easy example I'm not picking on any one position group but even my wife can understand this because uh, you know if we ask a receiver to run a route at five yards in the ball game, he runs that route at seven yards. I asked our coaches to go back. We, we, we called that route in practice all week long. Did we allow our players to run routes at seven yards? Or did that player run it every day at five yards, but he gets into the game and the game gets bigger and the moment gets bigger? We got to find out, number one, are we allowing our players in practice to do undisciplined things if that's the problem, that's 100% on the coaches. If our players are doing it as we ask them in meetings on Saturday all week long, but they're doing something different on game day, then we know we have another problem to address is how do we uh, control the mentality on game day of our players and not letting a moment get bigger than it is. So that's what our coaches are doing this week. 
and what we're asking our players and our leadership to do this week because we were sitting right here in this very position last year, one and two, and we had beaten a Mar uh, Mars Hill team. Uh, we had lost to a bowl subdivision team in Tennessee, and we had a very, very disappointing loss in Citadel, you know, who preseason was uh, number six team, I believe. You know, all polls don't matter, but it was a, it was a game going into that most people thought we were going to go win and on the road. We're sitting in the exact same uh, position we were last year. We didn't learn last year, that, that response. We didn't respond and learn from early last season to this season. Now, what we did last year is we rolled off a bunch of Southern Conference victories. Um, so, are we in panic mode? No, but are we in laser focus mode? Without a doubt, because we ran the table except for one ball game uh, in the SOCON last year. So, you know, we've been in this position before. So, we're believe me, we're doing a huge self-evaluation, and our players are, and and we're 100% committed to having a, a great year this year. And um, you know, but again, it boils back to uh, how we respond this week. Coach, you talk about discipline, obviously a different type of discipline with back-to-back -back option teams coming up and having that discipline on defense. What type of preparation are you making towards looking ahead to both Citadel and Wofford, your next two opponents? Well, one thing we do like is we get back-to-back -back option teams. You know, the, the schedule sets up nicely for us in the fact that we get an open date to get healthy, to get our scout team schooled up on simulating um, Citadel's offense. Uh, but for our defense, the principles of playing this style of offense versus an East Carolina, a Gardner Webb, uh, an East Tennessee style of offense is completely defensively, we have to change our mindset. And so, um, you know, it, and, and it, it requires to play this type of offense that we're going to play the next two weeks for your defense to be very disciplined with their eyes. What are we asking you to see? And once you see your key, as we call it, once we see what your key tells you, your eyes go to the next thing. It's a progression. And you have to be very disciplined in your eye control. And so, uh, obviously, um, we have not reached our capacity the last two weeks as a team because of discipline. And so, uh, our team knows playing this this kind of offense is, is it's a, uh, it just adds to what we want to be this year. And our players know, our coaches know what we have to get done. So now we'll see how we respond. So coach, definitely an open week, but not an off week for your squad this week. Well, no question, it is not an off week. So Western Carolina head coach Mark Spear, it's all the time we have today here on Catamount Football Weekly. Join us next week as we turn our attention to the incoming Citadel Bulldogs right here on Catamount Football Weekly. I'm Daniel Hooker saying so long for now.